Good morning guys, what's going on? Victor and I woke up early this morning and we're out here offshore fishing. We haven't came out to fish on the boat like this in quite some time. So very excited. We got our first fish on of the day. Very small, we're fishing planers. And we also got um, a feather up top for like a tuna, bonita, something like that. But this was on the planer. Might be a little king or a bonita, it's something small. Or a little tuna. Or a little tuna. The bonita. Keep it. Man, that's a big bonita for a dip fighting like that. Whoa! Jumbo! That thing did not fight at all, did it? No. <laughs> not until it like, got to the boat and then wanted to get all tangled up with the other arm. Alright, first fish of the day. Bonita. Not our target species, but that's okay. He's going in the cooler. He's gonna be bait for either later and also for my grandma who catches crabs, which you guys have seen in the past video. So, going in the cooler. Update? Update? <laughs> All right, well, we've been trolling for like two hours now, right? You yeah. think it's been that long? It's already 9.15. Oh my gosh, where does the time go? Maybe even longer than that. Well, we only caught that one bonita so, still so far. And um, one of our friends are out here and he caught... One blackfin. One blackfin. And one guy next to him got a wahoo. And the he's... water is not very nice today. We like blue, blue water. That Gulf Stream water, it's kind of green. And it's actually kind of choppy. Yeah, they said it was supposed to be one foot out here, and there's barely any wind, but there's somehow there's a two foot chop. It's really hard to tell in videos like how rough it is ever, but it's um, a little white cappy and just like an annoying chop, and there's actually like a little bit of a swell too. This type of fishing can be really fun, and you can get a lot of bites doing this, but at the same time, it also can be like today where you fish for a couple hours and you only get one fish, and it's not like we've missed anything either. We just that's it. The one good thing is the AC is always on. And by AC, I mean you got the breeze. You have yeah. the air moving because you're trolling. That's true. All right, well, it's been about, I don't know, three minutes since I just did that update. And we got something else on. Something small again. Didn't really take any line. Didn't take any line, actually. What is it? Oh, blackfin! There you go. That's what you wanted. There Brooke we said, go. Brooke said she wanted tuna for dinner. I said I wanted a tuna. There we go. He's not big, but he'll eat. There we go. That's what I wanted, a little tuna. We haven't had tuna in a while, and there he is. And you know what? Nowadays you can only keep two per person. They changed the regulations. Started January 1st, they changed the regulations on them. They don't have a size limit, but they do have a bag limit. So there we go. We got dinner. <laughs> All right, Mike, show us what you're putting out. So this is a bait strip. You guys have seen it in Brooks' videos before. It imitates a real Bonita strip, but it's a thin piece of film, very shiny, moves through the water like a little tail. Then we have a little double hook rig with a pin to hold it in place so it glides through the water. And then you have a sea witch. Um, there's a bunch of different companies that make these. This is a Stan Ruer one. And that's all the bites we've gotten on today have been on this combination right here. A bait strip and a Stan Ruer sea witch. So we have the bait strip and a sea witch on this side. And then we have a spoon on this side which have, hasn't got hit yet as well as a feather, like I had said, which also hasn't got hit yet. Okay, so here's the planer we're using. It's a number four. And then we have a bridle system. So that way, when we get this to the rod tip, we're able to take this off and Brooke can reel in the fish without having to hand line it the rest of the way. Because attached to this, where our lure is, we got about 100 feet of 50 pound mono. The thing with planer fishing is when you set the planer, the rod tip is all the way bent. And normally when you think of when you're fishing, if your rod tip's bent, then you have a fish on. But with planer fishing, it's just the opposite of what you would think. When you have a fish on, it trips the planer and the rod tip will come up and that's how you know that you got hit. If you have a big fish on, it's obviously gonna take line and run. 
but these small fish like that little black fin and the bonita didn't take any line so all I did was trip the planer and you could see that the rod tip was up and it just barely tapped a little bit but you can see how the rod tips are really bent when you're planer fishing Well, I wonder how long this guy, yeah I wonder how long this guy's been on here I think quite a while got a mackerel just as I was about to switch the spoon too. Oh, that guy's been on there for a while. He feels dead. Who knows how long he's been on there. So the problem with a lot of the smaller fish is they don't pull a drag, they won't trip the planer, and that's what happens. Like, it, it feels like he's been on ice for a couple hours. No. Yeah, he's, look, he's lifeless. I guess that's why we haven't caught something on the um, spoon, spoon in a while because it had a fish on there. <laughs> like we were saying, the planer trips when it has a fish on it, but that fish was so small that the planer didn't even trip. And sometimes that's what happens. Sometimes you reel it in, you got like a little baby bonita and you didn't even know it. Our friend Elliot just called Victor to say that he caught a 45 pound wahoo. And he's the one who created the bait strips that we're using. So hopefully we have some luck. Another black fish. Oh, this one's bigger, I think. Yay! That is our fourth fish, our second blackfin. It's just a little bigger than the last one, but now we really got a tuna dinner. What do you think, Rick? Yep. I'm and it's excited. on that same bait. Nothing else has got hit. No, the blue, the blue and white. The blue and white. With the uh, bait strip. There's the bait strip. That's what we've been talking about with the bait strip. I said I wanted to catch blackfin. There we go, right Vic? Yep, you did. Tuna time. All right, so we have another fish on the exact same setup, the blue and white. And Vic's reeling it in this time. Yeah, Brooke let me reel in a fish, you know. It actually got a lot calmer. Earlier we were saying that there were white caps. Check it out now, it's like slipped out. This was the first fish that actually pulled a little drag. And it was. You know? Yep. Some sort of tuna or a bonita. I think it's a black one, bro. Looks black. It's a black one. Yeah? Yeah. Ooh, even bigger. <gasps> yeah! That's the biggest one of the day. That should have been your fish. It's okay. It's okay. Brooke drove the boat. It's a team effort. We did it, babe. We did it. You know, Brooke yesterday said, Vic, I want to catch a tuna. We've caught lots of tuna today. Actually, all we've caught is tuna. Even that bonita's a tuna. But a beautiful black fin on the bait strips. Look at this thing. Beautiful fish and gonna look beautiful on a dinner plate, isn't it? Yep. What do you think? One more. Let's get one more. One more? Let's get one more. Number three blackfin going in the cooler. Alright, well, I caught the first few fish. Now Vic gets a turn. Smaller than the last one, Vic? Oh, yeah. Much smaller. Didn't pull any drag, didn't trip the planer, I just saw the rods hit bouncing. <laughs> there's, your, there's your other black fin though. <gasps> Whoa, Whoa Vic! There's a spool of leader there. Look at him, he's Almost lit up. Look at him. Look at those stripes, huh? Can I hold them up for you in the sun? Yeah. They don't want nothing to do with the short bait. It's all about that long blue and crystal. So blackfin used to be a species that was never regulated. It was part of the unregulated species, which was a hundred pounds per day. But now they put a regulation on them starting January 1st, where it's two per person or 10 per vessel, whichever is greater. So technically Victor and I could keep 10 today, but I think we're gonna stop trolling. And try to catch sailfish. I think we're gonna stop trolling, try to catch some live bait, like some blue runners and then drift around and hopefully catch a sailfish. All right guys, so we are back at the dock and here is our cooler full of fish. And now it is time to lay our tuna up. 
This was the bigger one that Victor caught, but I'm gonna fillet it because he is just so kind and he's letting me fillet it. Aww. <laughs> All right guys, so my knife of choice today is this Dexter six inch curved boning knife. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab this peck fin, move it out of the way, and I'm going to make a cut around the throat towards the head and now black tunas do have head meat so I'm going to come all the way up here to the head get all the way down so after I made the head cut now I'm going to come down here by the tail make a cut there and now I'm going to go like this down the fish just making that first initial cut and I'm feeling my knife on the bone you always want to make sure that you are on the bone so that you're not missing meat now we're going to come in here and just keep following down the bones making sure our blade is on the bones do you think i've said that enough babe? no say it a couple more times on the bones <laughs> now with tunas i like to separate it into two separate loins and to do that I like to cut down the bloodline. Just go down the center of the fish. Oopsies. Just like that. Now, this top loin should come off if we've cut enough this direction. And there is our first loin. Look at that. Nice and beautiful. No, don't look at that. Look at this. Find you a girl that can do that, guys. Okay. Now, we're going to spin this baby around. And we're basically going to do the same thing on this side. Work our knife down. Same thing. Make sure you're on the spine. There are people who can fillet fish very, very fast. And there are some fish that I can fillet fast. But then there are some that I like to just take my time so that I don't miss meat. And I'll tell you what, tunas are one of those fish. At least for me, they are. So now that I have that bottom cut done, I can come on this side and work down. So it's kind of like the same thing, just lifting up with one part of your hand so you can see what's going on. And just working your knife down. Slow and steady. And there we go. There is our second loin. We went right over the belly. You don't ever want to puncture the belly of a fish when you're filleting. So we went right over the belly just like that. And I'd say that was pretty darn good. There's not much meat there that, you could, that I missed. So that's good. Now the same thing, the exact same thing on the other side. Start with the top loin, work to the bottom loin. I'm gonna put this back in the cooler for now and skin these two loins for you. Now to skin, I like a nice narrow fillet knife. So this is the nine inch narrow fillet knife. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is take off this bloodline and bone. This not very appetizing, blood red, bony, gross looking stuff, but we will keep this for crab bait, not going to waste. Now to remove the skin, starting from the tail section, and just work your way down. Nice, nice and close to the edge of the table makes it a lot easier to get your knife nice and flat. The top line is a little bit harder than the bottom line because it's thinner. 
There we go. I left a little bit on there, but that's okay. At least I didn't leave any skin. We could remove a little bit more of that dark red. You see that? Or we could wait to do it in the kitchen, but let's just do it while we're here. See, I don't know about you, but I don't like eating that part. Especially because a lot of times with tuna, we eat it raw and it's just not very appetizing. I'll try it. You will? Yeah, I'll try it. You're gonna eat it right now? Yeah, I'll eat it right now. You want this much? I'll eat it, it's not, it's not a big deal. <clears throat> no faking it. Hold on. Taking, for I'm, more? No, I'm taking off a chunk of this just to try to compare it. Because we say a lot of things, but we've never actually tried the bloodline, so how can we talk about something we've never tried? One more. No. Listen, I'll tell you something. It's not for views, it's not to try to act like a hard ass. It doesn't... It's... Certainly, this cut is much milder. I wouldn't say fishy. It's, it's uh, oilier, richer, but this is also eaten fresh the next day. This fish has been dead for less than 24 hours. I certainly probably wouldn't eat it after four or five days in the fridge, but it's really not bad. And I'm not just saying that. It's not bad at all. It's very good. Okay. So we say we need to take the bloodline out, but I think if eaten fresh, that's the biggest thing I always say in my videos. It's fine. I'm not going to eat a piece of the bloodline, but I'll eat a piece of this. Comment below if you want Brooke to see a piece of the bloodline. Aw, oh, too bad by the time it's posted it'll be long gone. There's always next time. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're going to like shred a little tiny bit off. I would love to have a little bowl of soy sauce. Very good. We want to see that dance again is what we want to see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there's our two loins. I'm gonna fillet the other side and then I will meet you guys back in the kitchen. Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. So tonight I'm doing a tuna fish stir fry. Now I've never done a fish stir fry before. I'm hoping that the fish doesn't fall apart, but let's get to seasoning. So I have my tuna here and I just have them chunked into some pieces and now we're gonna season them up. I got some pepper. Some salt and some garlic powder. And I'm gonna flip them over and do the same thing on the other side. This was one loin of the fish, of the biggest one that we caught. So, same thing on the other side. Now, on this plate, we have some cornstarch. Now, with the cornstarch, I'm hoping that it kind of helps keep the fish together more. So, I'm just gonna tap it on the fish on both sides. And the fish is nice and dry right now. I'm not covering them up completely, just giving them a little bit. Now we're going to start on the sauce that we're going to use for our stir fry, which I've never done a stir fry before. I think I did it one time and I used like a pre-made mix. So I kind of looked online to get an idea of what to do. So that's what we're gonna work on. So far I have a quarter cup of water in my measuring cup here. And now I'm going to add a quarter cup of, of soy sauce. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to just pour a little sesame oil in here. And pour some sesame oil. Just like that. I'm going to do like two spoonfuls of honey. Two spoonfuls of vinegar. Like that. Like a shot of sriracha. I don't even know what that really means. <laughs> Definitely not a shot of sriracha. I'm just gonna do a little bit. I'm not a big hot heat person, so if you like a lot of hot, sriracha is for you. Do some more sriracha, not for me. We're going to do one tablespoon of cornstarch. This is what's gonna make it thicker. So that's one tablespoon of that. Rice vinegar, 
Two tablespoons of rice vinegar. So two tablespoons of rice vinegar. Stir this baby up. And then we're gonna mix this up until the cornstarch is mixed in. Mmm, smells good. <laughs> All right, so now I have some oil that's nice and hot in a pan. I'm gonna start putting my fish in. These are not gonna take very long to cook. They're not very big. I also don't wanna dry my fish out. So they've been on for like a minute. Now I'm gonna flip them all over. Look at that nice little brown we got going on. All right, so it's been like a minute and a half, two minutes. We're browned on the other side now. And we're gonna take them out. Nice and pretty. So far, they're staying together pretty nice. Next step, in the same pan, we're going to put in one yellow onion and three little bell peppers. All right, little tip. Whenever we pre-cook fish or make one batch and then we're making another batch, we always put it in the microwave to keep it warm. We're not have, we don't have the microwave on, but it keeps it warmer than the rest of the house. At least I like to think so. <laughs> so that's in there. Okay, so my peppers and onions are a little tender. Now I'm going to add some white mushrooms. You guys know how much I love mushrooms. Now typically you would make a stir fry in a wok, which Victor just bought a wok, but we have season it first and I didn't want to wait for that so we are using just a regular pan. Now over here we have a pot of boiling water which go we're going to add some lo mein noodles into. And that's what we're going to put our stir fry vegetables and fish on top of is the noodles. Okay. Next thing we have some garlic here. We're putting garlic in. Now that our mushrooms are nice and tender we're also adding in some ginger. And at the same time, we're going to add in some bean sprouts. I absolutely love bean sprouts. And could it really be a stir fry if you didn't have these? Mm -hmm. So now the garlic and ginger has been going for like a minute or so. So you can smell it. You don't want to burn it, so don't cook it for too long. Now we're adding in that sauce that we made earlier. Nice and beautiful and thick. Look at that. That's using your noggin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now we're going to add our fish back in. And I turned my heat down to low. So our fish has been reheating for two minutes and now we're going to do our plate. A nice spoonful of pasta. Amazing. Okay, there's our first plate. I'm so happy that the fish stayed so well together. Mm -hmm. It didn't fall apart at all. 
I also think that the fact that it was tuna really helped. I don't know how some other fish would have done. Tuna is kind of something that stays together pretty well. But the cornstarch definitely had to help too. And for the final touch, some homegrown scallion. And there we go. One word, banger. Brooke, excellent job. Now, I don't know who you guys are at home or what you guys know about fish or fishing or cooking, but traditionally tuna is not prepared in this way. So kudos to Brooke for getting out of her comfort zone and trying something new and it came out so good. Cause tuna is really incredibly easy to dry out and to overcook, super tender. Cornstarch killed it. You got little mini steaks, so flavorful, the sauce, and a really neat way to make tuna that could definitely spice up your old recipe, because we eat a ton of sushi and, and raw fish and um, poke style tuna and, and make rolls out of it, but this is a very nice touch. So good job, babe. It's really good. Thank you. I'll tell you what, guys, I impressed myself. I'm kind of a simple cook. Um, I don't like things that are too complicated. It just kind of intimidates me. So this kind of had me a little bit nervous doing different things that I've never really done before. But it was actually quite simple. It was actually quick and it's so, so good. I'm sure you guys have seen so many tuna sushi recipes that I've done before, sushi videos, because whenever we catch tuna, it's like, oh, we either blacken it or we eat it raw and make sushi out of it. And I was like, I need to do something different and this is so, so, so good. I'm telling you, you have to try it. So good, so many different flavors, and I definitely recommend trying it, and I honestly wouldn't have changed a thing. All the vegetables that were in it were really good and taste really great. If I had had the wok ready, I probably would have mixed the noodles into it together instead of serving it separately, but there was plenty of sauce, so it was really good. I wouldn't change a thing. It was very good. Thanks, Mike. Very good. Look, all my fish is gone. All of my fish is already gone. I'm going up for seconds in a little bit. I think as long as you put a cornstarch layer on your fish, I think it'll hold it together well and you can do this with anything. As long as you do like small pieces that won't, that won't really fall apart, give it a try guys. You won't regret it. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.